Hello and welcome to Pickles Garage. Today we're going to be working on the BMW once again. We are replacing the radiator. Another one that I got at Rock Auto, still not sponsored, great products. Let's dive into it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the initial tools that we'll need to get into this fairly straightforward repair. Thanks for watching. Okay, to start us off, we're gonna need a couple different of the torque sizes and then we're gonna need various tools to help remove the hoses. But we're gonna go ahead with our T20 here to <clears throat> remove these. It's gonna be two, one on each side, but of course mine only has one. And then we are removing our air box here just to get a little bit more room, a little bit more access to everything. So got that off, got that one off, and then go ahead move this out of the way and then there's a couple different points here there's a bolt here there's actually a bolt under here I'm gonna have to remove as well and then I'm gonna use a screwdriver to remove that hose and then this you just slide to the side I'm gonna pull this plug out so let me do that real quick with both hands and we'll resume so these bolts were size 10 metric screwdriver, like I mentioned, just loosen that up and then that sensor you just set aside. So from here we're working on the various connecting hoses. So some of these are going to be fairly brittle, so you do want to be very careful. Um, some of this is like hard line and stuff. So. We're gonna go ahead and remove this one first. I'm going to unscrew it here, and then you can see it's kind of suction cupped into the electric fan here. So we're gonna be able to pull that and then set it aside, and then we're gonna work on the next bit. So let me grab my screwdriver. Leave some of the tension here. And this is the point in which you could use something similar to this to go ahead and slide it slightly. It's a lot easier with two hands, but let me go ahead and wrap this up. But like I said, I'm going to pop this off and then remove it from those two pieces. Okay, so these just pop straight back at this retaining clip. And then there is this plug here. You're just gonna push in the tabs. Might need a screwdriver just for this other side just cause it's a little tight, but I won't need a lot of pressure here. There we go. So that's removed. I can set both of these aside here. And then that exposes really this hose we can get to now. Um, mine obviously is drained of coolant just because it does have a very severe massive leak. If yours has a leak elsewhere, then you might want to drain with the plug below. Um, I don't feel any fluid here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. But if you haven't already, I would drain from the plug below. All right, so we're now on the driver's side, but I wanted to show you how these retaining clips work. So basically you just put your screwdriver down in and you could just pry it out. And so you can remove them entirely, but usually that will work just fine. This is plastic, so right now it's, yeah, it's pretty gripped. So I am gonna once again use my tools to pull this off, but just be careful. Obviously you don't wanna break any of the plastic pieces. It'll probably be easier to show on this one just because it's a little bit more exposed. But once again, tendon clip, pulling it out of the way, comes off entirely. And then because it's metal, it'll come off a little easier in theory. So you can use a tool like this or another pipe related one, but just want to be careful not to damage any of the plastic parts. 
So really what we're doing is we're just getting some of these hoses out of the way. So I'm gonna grab the lower one that I was first showing. I'll take that off and then we're gonna save this actual connection from here to here for last just because it's plastic on plastic. So you can use like WD-40 or something to loosen it up as well. But let me remove that hose down here and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so retaining clip out of the way. And nice and easy. Don't wanna break anything, but we're now gonna set this aside. So from here, we're going to be taking off the actual electric fan. So I'll show you where all the bolts are for this. Okay, so for the most part, this is actually held on by just being slid into this, but there are a couple points that are connected. So there is a T25 here, and then there's also one on the bottom that we have to remove in order to get access. Now, if you haven't yet, obviously, I'm gonna have to go up from underneath, and so yours likely has that plastic sort of skid plate underneath. Um, for the most part, you're removing every one of those bolts that you find um, because they pretty much all hold that plastic bit on and then there's an additional piece that I will show you. So I will take off this one first and then we'll go to the underneath part. Okay, so my skid plate has been off for a little while so unfortunately I'm not able to show you but basically there's going to be a ton of these which are size eight metric and they're connected to really all these sort of individual holes here. And you'll just kind of keep going around until you find them all and then have them removed. So the last sort of skid plate here that's still on is actually held together with these two, which are size 10. And then I should be able to remove this entirely, which I will need to do to get to that bottom portion because the next section that I'm doing is going to be the trans cooler here which is connected to our plastic fan with that bolt. Realistically I could probably get in there without having to remove this but just because it'll be so much more convenient to see everything with it removed I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick. Which by the way if you don't have these super helpful but as mentioned, those were size 10, gave me more access, so now we're going to be removing the trans cooler, and then this thing is just about ready to go. Sorry, very loose. So this is actually not a star, it's going to be a hexagon size 9, and we're going to go ahead and get this removed from the bottom. There it goes. All right, and then I'm gonna go back up top so we can pull this electric fan out of the way. All right, so like mentioned, it's just slid into these groove tabs here. So I just have to uh, slide them out of the way. Make sure this isn't caught on anything. Pull it straight up and get her out of her way. Okay, so this is where you're gonna wanna have your bucket handy. So we're gonna be removing these two. Uh, starting with this one, this bottom one, it's probably gonna be where we get the majority of the fluid coming out, if there was fluid. Uh, now I can see more in detail, I'll try and give you guys a better view of the damage. So I have, uh, yeah, I'll show you. I have right there that gouge, that's pretty deep. And then there's another one around down there. And then I have right about there, as you can see. So. Definitely not supposed to have multiple 
punctures in your radiator if you want it to work properly. So that is my issue, but yes, I'm going to remove these hoses, very similar to the removal of our other hoses. Once again, plastic on plastic, so you do want to be pretty careful. It is convenient and super inconvenient at the same time. A lot of domestic vehicles, they have hose clamps, which can get irritating, but this in theory should be faster, but it doesn't really feel that way, does it? Well, even though you shouldn't have to remove the clip entirely, I feel like you always do. Oh, there it goes. Bit by bit. Come on. Oh. There we go. I'm gonna get the other one from the top. Can't even use my tools because it's so far in there. You know what? I didn't use WD-40 on any of these. Let me use it for the last one. Okay, so WD-40 saved the day. You might be able to pry it a little bit too, but again, plastic on plastic, so you don't want to do too much and end up damaging it. So we are very close. We do have one more hose to disconnect, and then there's just going to be a couple more bolts. So you'll see it right here. And I'm going to go to the bottom. We're just going to remove that, and then this is going to pop out. So let's hop on down. So it should be another T25 here. There's not a lot of room. But I think if I get loose enough, get this off. Might be some fluid down here, so... Let's see if I can slide out of the way a little bit. Put that down, and then this will pop straight back. All right, I need two hands, because again, plastic on plastic, don't want to break it, but I'm gonna disconnect this, and then we're gonna go back up top. Okay, best way to do it is to sort of get like a screwdriver under that portion and then just kind of walk it back and forth. So as you're prying, push against it, and just kind of walk it out. But now we are going to remove the final two bolts here. They're both Torx 25 and there's one on each corner. Okay, so easy enough, you remove your two top Torx 25s and then this is good to come out. So, we're just going to try not to run into too much on the way out. It should slide more or less straight up, but you might have to wiggle it a little bit just to get as some of the hoses that you moved. Pull it forward a little bit. Make sure you have your bucket handy. So many holes and it's leaking all over the place. And it's free. Oh. 
Okay, so you have the old one out. You can see clearly the damage here. Um, there isn't really anything you need to rob off the old one to put on your new one, so that's a plus. Um, these tabs and everything, those are gonna be on your new one. I would just give it a quick inspection and just make sure that everything that you see here on your old one is already present on your new one. It will come with some different connection and gaskets that you can put on uh, just in case, because a lot of these are more or less universal kits. And so they design it for one specific vehicle. And if you have that vehicle, great, you don't have to do anything. But if you don't, you can modify it slightly for it to work. The one thing that I will say is more important than anything else for this repair, in my opinion, is not to damage the fins on the new one. So you see how these are all kind of bent in on this old one. Now, it's so easy for you to cause damage. Like, look, I'm just pressing my thumb here. All right, closed off. Not very hard to do, right? So if you do that, air is not going to flow well through that point and eventually it's just not even going to function properly at all so stuff like this very easily damages the ability for it to do its job so on the new one be extremely careful not to touch the fins at all you don't want to risk damaging because it takes absolutely nothing to damage these fins so keep that in mind do not touch the fins on the new one Otherwise, you're going to have to replace again. So we're going to go ahead and get the new one lined up and start reconnecting in the opposite order that we disconnected. Okay, so we'll just get this lined up. Once again, holding plastic parts only, not the fins. Go ahead and get her in. Easy. And the trans cooler. Little by little. Okay, so now that we have our new one in place, we're just going to start with the two T25, Torx 25 top parts. So I loosely put these in place where they're supposed to go, and then I'll get the retaining clips as well, but basically I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna start at the bottom with the trans cooler line, get that reconnected here, and then we're going to get these officially attached and work our way up from there. So let me start at the bottom here. Okay, so we got that initial plastic piping in. I got the other lower one and snap back into place. I'm gonna do that middle one there here next, but you're also gonna have these ports that we need to plug here on either side. I just like to do it once it's actually in. Yours will come with a diagram. Effectively, there's a certain size that's needed for if you have a manual versus an automatic, if you have an intercooler, or if you don't have an intercooler. Uh, I have an intercooler and I have an automatic, so I'm gonna use the two 91 millimeters on either side of mine. The other thing you could do is you could pop out the ones on your old one. They should be the sizes that you need. You just connect it to the baggie that it comes with, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in real quick. Also, real quick, you probably saw this tool. This is just used to put in the gasket. You could probably do a screwdriver as well, but it just helps line up the, the gasket on this one and get it into the groove. But now we have these. These are our 91s, and it is going to be a 19 millimeter to go ahead and plug them in. It's plastic, so you don't have to over tighten it. You just have to get snug, but one for each side. We're gonna go ahead and pop those in right now. Okay. Get this lined up. There we 
we go. Clip in place. Nice and snug. Do a little test like that. That is good to go. Okay, we are now at a point where we could put back in our electric fan here. You'll notice that there's these two tabs here. They're just gonna slide in place over here on this side. Clip. I want to get in front of here. There we go. I'm gonna walk it back and forth. Once again, protecting the fin. But we'll get this side in its cradle, like that. We'll get this side clipped into place, like that. You'll hear the snap, and it will all be lined up just like that. So that is nice and secure. We're just going to put in our screws once again. Okay, so what you'll notice is the fan will slip into those new clips of yours, which is great. And then we have the bolt right here. And then those are the new plugs I already installed. So I'll get that connected and then that basically finishes it for the bottom. Everything else will be up top. So let me finish this up and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay, home stretch. So we got plug here. Go. We got your T25 right here, All right? And then we got your hose right here. We got this hose. I'm actually going to put this under here. So I'll pop this back in, being very careful, very delicate. So that's going to be right there. Got our clip plugged in here. I'm going to finish tightening this. I'm not going to forget about it. But I'm basically just getting everything lined up now. Alright. Got our hose here. Again, don't want to break anything here. Get this lined up. Good there. Ooh, good there. Got a retaining clip, so that's locked in. Got this hose. So a screwdriver here. Nice and tight. Okay. Then we got this hose. Just gonna come up from the bottom. I got my retaining clip over there on the ground. I'm going to grab, I'm going to connect this, I'm going to connect this. And like I said, I'm going to finish that. And then we are good to go. And then we're going to go ahead and fill up our coolant. And that's it. So we'll put the AC box in. We'll put the skid plate underneath, but no need to, to wrap up that part with you guys. So thank you very much for watching and uh, have a great rest of your day.